So we've been able to characterize optimal public spending implicitly. So we've obtained this nice um, implicit formula. for um, optimal stimulus spending. That formula, so we've said that um, optimal stimulus spending, so G over C minus, G, so stimulus spending is because it's not the absolute level of spending, but it's a deviation we can, what we characterize not the absolute level, but the deviation from the San Wilson level, which is like a baseline level that would hold in an efficient world. Um, so GC minus GC star, what we said is that and that was equal to um, 2 epsilon times M, the unemployment multiplier times U minus U star over U star, the unemployment gap. And we said so this is an implicit formula because the U that shows up here that's a function itself of g over c. Um, so you have g over c on the right hand side, g over c on the left hand side. Um, so this is like an implicit characterization of um, public spending and stimulus spending. Now what I want is an explicit characterization when I take some initial unemployment gap and I figure out how, what is the size of the stimulus package that I want to implement. Okay? Um, so that's the goal of uh, what we are trying to do now. We want an explicit formula for optimal stimulus spending. So what I mean with explicit is that formula involving the initial unemployment gap Which we, which we can denote u0 minus u star over u star, and the zero here uh, appears because it's an initial gap, formula involving initial unemployment gap. And of course, this initial unemployment gap, that cannot be a function of g over c because it's what happens initially once a shock you know, has thrown the economy into a reception, uh, and you know, other solution statistics. So that's the goal of the exercise. So basically, the, the, the question that we're trying to answer is, we are at u0 minus u star over u star, and spending is g over c star. So you have the Samuelson level of spending, the economy, you know, like say, for instance, you're in a recession, a recession has hit, this is a shock that uh, has uh, increased the unemployment gap. Spending is G over C star. Uh, the question is how much should, because yes, how much should uh, spending increase? Or, you know, I mean, under some, we know under some sufficient statistics, spending might, it might be, uh, it might decrease, but let's say, you know, how much should it increase or decrease? How much should it change, basically? And so the goal, so how are we going to do that? Uh, so you can see in this formula, epsilon, that's an elasticity of substitution, um, that's fixed. Um, you know, the multiplier is a sufficient statistic, but, uh, you know, it's not something that's going to really respond to, uh, it's not going to, something that's going to respond much to G over C. And even if it does, the key thing is that uh, because you already have U minus U star over U star on, 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 on the right hand side, any changes in the, in the value of the multiplier when you change spending, that's only going to be second order. Um, so the, you know, the key thing is that you only, what you want to do is really um, figure out how U minus U star over U star responds to G over C. Uh, that's really the key thing. And all the other changes in, uh, in M, for instance, would be second order. So actually what this shows you is that fluctuations in the multiplier that people talk a lot about, and in fact, 
even I wrote um, papers on that. But what I realized when I worked on this project is that all these fluctuations and multipliers are only second order. They only have second order effects on um, public spending because all the first order effects on public spending are determined by the unemployment gap. All the fluctuations around that are only second order, so they'll be small. So what the, the only thing we need to figure out is how the unemployment gap is going to respond when you change geography. So to make the formula explicit, we express u minus u star over u star, which is this endogenous unemployment gap that actually responding when you change your uh, as a function of u0 minus u star and u star, so the initial unemployment gap, and gc minus gc star over gc star, the change, you know, the change in uh, public spending. Um, so that's what we want to do. That's the goal. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, we'll, um, we'll use a first order approximation like we've used so far. That's the key tool uh, here that we, that we can use. Um, so we'll do first order approximation of u minus u star over u star around the initial condition that we described, that is, you know, an unemployment gap u0 minus u star over u star and a, sp and a spending g over c star. So we do a first order approximation. So we do a first order Taylor expansion and forget all the terms that are over order two or above around the initial situation. All right, so let's do that. So. Uh, Let's start. So we have u minus u star over u star. That's what I'm interested in. So, you know, uh, this is just a, a function of, uh, you know, public spending g over c because public spending in the economy here determines everything. Um, so initial situation, initial value of that function, that's u0 minus u star over u star. All right. Plus, so then we need to know um, we need to take the derivative of u minus u star over u star as a function of, uh, you know, of the variable of interest. Um, so, you know, the, we can take the variable of interest to be, um, you know, g over c, the share of public spending. So we can write this as, so u star is just something that's uh, fixed here. Uh, so when you change g over c, that's going to change u. That's the only thing that changes. So the derivative of u minus u star over u star. Uh, first, it's going to be 1 over u star, because that's the derivative of u minus u star over u star with respect to u, times the derivative of u with respect um, to gc, which is what we're interested in, times you know, the deviation of gc from the initial situation, which is GC star. Okay. So this is what happens when I consider u minus u star over u star as a function of g over c, and I do a first order approximation around the initial situation. Okay. And here, what I can do just to simplify things a little bit here, I could uh, even, I'm going to div even divide this by g over c star just to obtain the type of ratio that we've used before. And then I'm going to multiply here by g over c star. Okay, I'm allowed to do that. But then here you notice what I have is I have g over, I have d, dgc divided by g over c star. That's just, that's just the same as uh, d log gc. So this thing I can just rewrite it as du over d log gc. Because d log gc is just 1 over gc times dgc um, and evaluated at g over c star, that, that's what we get here. Uh, okay, so what I've shown is that u minus u star over u star is equal to u0 minus u star over u star, so that's something that I'm happy to keep, plus 
1 over u star times du d log gc times gc minus gc star over gc star. Okay, great. So this thing I'm happy to keep. So here I'm happy with everything. The only thing that I still need to work is this du d log gc because that's not a sufficient statistics. Uh, that's something you know. This I need to rework because it's not a sufficient statistic. It's not something that uh, that I know what to do with. So let's rework it. All right. So here my goal now is to compute du d log gc. And in, in particular, what I'm particularly eager to do is try to have the unemployment multiplier DGC, DGC appear here because that's something you know that I can hope to measure in the data and that already enters into the formula. So du d log GC, I can rewrite it as du dg times dg d log GC. Okay. Uh, so I'm always uh, allowed to use this chain rule like this. So this is great because du G, dg, that's just, you know, it's a change in unemployment rate when you change um, the share of the workers who work in the public sector. But that's just minus the unemployment multiplier. So that's minus m, the unemployment, the unemployment multiplier times dg d log gc. Okay. So now we just need to tackle dg d log gc. That's kind of just accounting because, because of course, G and C, they are related, you know, they are the share of workers in the private and public sector. Uh, so that's something we can, uh, we can work on. So notice that C, the share of um, productive workers in the private sector, so we know it's one the size of the labor force minus you know, u plus v, basically minus um, g, right? So how many people are productive in the private sector? The size of the labor force minus people who are non-productive, minus people who are productive in the public sector. Okay. Uh, now, so from this, I learned that dc dg, it's so one that disappears, I take the derivative. So minus, so u plus v, you know, you can, you know, of course, you can think of that as uh, that's a function of g. So it's you can think of this as uh, minus d the u plus v dg minus uh, one. That's the derivative of g with respect to g. Okay, so that's dc dg. Um, here, so here we're trying to compute that derivative. Uh, technically, the derivative is evaluated at uh, u0 and gc star, which is the initial situation. But the thing is that even if you evaluate it somewhere a bit different, the difference, of course, you know, the difference between the two derivatives is going to be a, you know, a first order difference. But the thing is that it's going to be compounded by that gc minus gc star over gc star, um, which, is also, you know, which is also a first order term. And so these two first order terms would be compounded to become second order term. And so they will disappear. So it's, you know, when you do first order, approximation, the derivative, you can always evaluate them, that you can always evaluate them at places that are a bit different because the difference between the two derivatives, which is another first order term, would be compounded with the first first order term and that will give you second order term. And so, um, because we'll eliminate all these second order term, we can evaluate this uh, derivative, in fact, at GC star and U star, which will be very helpful, um, actually, uh, instead of evaluating instead of evaluating it at u0. So I'm going to evaluate this at um, u star and g over c star. Okay, and so here the key thing is that uh, did you put v dg 
and u star uh, that's just equal to zero because when we're at u star u plus v is minimized so the derivative of u plus v with respect to you know the derivative of u plus v with respect to u is zero and then therefore the derivative of u plus v with respect to g is also going to be uh, zero because this thing you can think of it as du plus v du times du dg but the definition of u star is that it's a place where u plus v is minimized uh, so this is just equal to zero here uh, So that's the key thing that because at u star that's where waste or non-productive use of labor is minimized the derivative of u plus zero with respect to g is going to be uh, just zero here so uh, what we learned is that dc dg is just going to be uh, minus one at u star Okay, so that's very helpful. So now, but what I can, but what I'm interested in is dg d log gc. So uh, let's comp let's but let you know. So let's compute this. Now that we have this result, dc dg is minus one at u star. That's actually uh, that's that's a very important result. So we'll use it now. We'll use it to um, compute. So what I'm interested in is d log gc dg i think i said let's see yes dg d log gc so d log dg dg is what i'm interested in so this is what uh, so this is going to be one over gc uh, that's the derivative of log over gc times now the derivative of gc with respect to g so derivative so that's derivative of gc respect to g so that's going to be one over gc times and the derivative of g with of gc with respect to g that's just going to be one over c minus uh, g c square times d c d g okay now uh, so this thing here so now we have kind of everything we need so d c d g is this one we say it's minus one because we had u star um, and then and then we can evaluate all the, the other stuff, all those things here. We can evaluate them at g over c square, at g over c star. So we get that d log g c d g is just going to be one over g c star times. Uh, so I have a minus one. So I have uh, times. 1 over c star plus g over c square and everything starred here. Uh, and so, right, so g over c star, let's, so we can just write this as uh, c star over g star, basically 1 over c star g star c square and so this thing is going to simplify to uh, right so this is good oh uh, let's see one of our system Right, so this is going to simplify to 1 over g star here, that's the first term, plus c star plus uh, uh, 1 over c star. All right, excellent. So now we can put everything together. So, um, okay, so d log gc over dg evaluated at uh, u star and gc star is this thing that we have here is 1 over g star plus 1 over c star so then uh, if we go up so then we can compute 
here we were interested in du d log gc, dg, which is minus m dg d log gc. So we get therefore that du d log gc is going to be minus m times so minus m times dg d log g, dg, and so it's going to be the inverse of what we have here. So it's going to be minus m times one over 1 over g star plus 1 over c star. Yeah, so what's very nice is that here you recognize actually, so this we can rewrite it in fact as minus m divided by 2 times 2 over 1 over g star plus 1 over c star. The reason I do this is that here we recognize we have the harmonic, this is the harmonic mean of uh, G star and C star. Um, so this is cool actually, that the only thing that appears here in, our, uh, in the expression for this du d log GC, you have the unemployment multiplier M and then you have the harmonic mean between G star and C star. So something that's you know in between um, public and private uh, employment. So this is uh, something nice. So let's keep it here. Let's keep it, uh, let's keep that here. It's nice to have the harmonic mean. Great, so we have du d log gc. Now, so okay, so we can plug that in the expression because we were looking for this du d log gc over there, so we can uh, plug it in, in here. So we get that u minus u star over u star, it's the initial unemployment gap, u0 minus u star over u star, plus uh, what do we have after this? Um, we have this, we have one over u star and then this du d log gc and then we have gc minus gc star over gc star. So we have this, then we have, oh, so there is a minus here. We have minus uh, m, we have a two u star and then we have our harmonic mean here, two over one over g star plus one over c star. And then we have the GC minus GC star over GC star. So here you see now we explicitly characterize how the unemployment gap here um, is based on the initial unemployment gap and of course how uh, public spending is going to deviate from Samuelson, you know, through the unemployment, oops, through the unemployment uh, multiplier here. So this is saying, well, yeah, we start from some unemployment gap, but that I, as I change public spending, um, the unemployment gap is actually going to change. And so now what I can do is now the goal is to, uh, so I've expressed u minus u star as a function of sufficient statistics, the initial, uh, as a function of the initial unemployment gap here. Have my initial unemployment gaps, and I have a bunch of sufficient statistics. here, and then I have a stimulus spending here. And so what I can do is I can chug all these things back into the right-hand side of my implicit formula to make it explicit. Um, so now we're going to plug this into implicit formula. So the formula was implicit because u minus u star over u star the unemployment gap responded to public spending to implicit formula to make it explicit. Okay, so what do we get? We get that gc minus gc star over GC star, which is the so left hand side of our implicit formula, it's going to be, uh, so let's see if we go back all the way. Right, it was this 2 epsilon m u minus u star over u star, and now we have an expression for u minus u star over u star that we're going to put. So it's going to be 2 epsilon m. Oops. Yes. 2 epsilon m times u0 minus u star over u star. 
Okay, so this is what comes out of uh, you know multiplying this initial neutron gap by two epsilon m, and then we have minus. So I have a two that eliminates with a two. Uh, I have epsilon. I have m. It's going to be m square. Uh, then I have one over u star. Then I have my geometric average two over one u star plus one. Star and then I have my uh, stimulus pending. Okay, so now I have everything, but then you notice uh, so here you notice I have stimulus pending on the left hand side, stimulus pending on the right hand side. So, what I want to do is put everything on the same side so that I can have actually an expression for stimulus pending. So, we'll get that. One plus epsilon m square, and so this thing is just kind of annoying. So let's uh, here I have a big constant. So let's call this z for now. Let's define this as z. Uh, just to kind of uh, keep things a bit simple. So I have epsilon m square z, and then I'm, then all of this is going to be gc minus gc star over gc star, and that's going to be equal to 2 epsilon m u0 minus u star over u star. Okay, And then now we can put everything together and get our formula. So the formula says that... Uh, let's So we get the explicit formula for optimal stimulus spending. So we get that uh, GC minus GC star over G. Uh, over GC star is going to be equal to, uh, so we'll have 2 epsilon m, m again, right, and that's going to be divided by 1 plus z epsilon m square times u0 minus u star over u star. And so this is the formula. Uh, so this is an explicit formula for optimal stimulus spending. So you can see what are the sufficient statistics here. So the, you know, here of course this is a stimulus stimulus spending on the left hand side, GC minus GC star over GC star, U0 minus U star over U star, that's the initial unemployment gap. Okay, and then we have the epsilon, we have M that shows up. Oops. Uh, so this is, you know, you want to express stimulus spending as a function of the initial unemployment gap, and then we have a couple of statistics. So we have epsilon, the elasticity of substitution between you know pri uh, public consumption and private consumption. So it says how easy it is to replace um, private good by public goods. We have M, the unemployment multiplier, which shows up interestingly in the numerator and the denominator. And then the last thing is that we have Z, which is just a description of uh, the efficient you know, uh, allocation. So Z, you know, we used it just to simplify. So Z is 1 over U star times, so U star is the efficient unemployment rate, and then times the geometric average, the, uh, sorry, the harmonic average of a public and a private consumption. Okay. So it's you know it's it's uh, 
So it's just something that's, you know, characterized by all those stars, the U stars, the G stars, the G and the C stars. So everything that happens at the efficient allocation. So this is, uh, this is our formula. And now we can spend a bit of time like thinking about what it means.